created by humans. They call them the seven wonders of the world. Now what you're about to see is three times taller than the greatest pyramid in Egypt and five times higher than the hanging gardens of Babylon. Now if the Phoenicians had seen this incredible structure, they may have added an eighth wonder to their list. It rises majestically from the vast waters of the Gulf of Mexico as one of the most extraordinary engineering feats of this century. Built by Shell Oil, it is the world's tallest oil rig. Nicknamed Bullwinkle, it is a compelling monument to the remarkable ingenuity and cutting-edge technology that created it. It may look like any other offshore rig, but what's most astounding lies hidden beneath the surface. From its base on the ocean floor, Bullwinkle is one of the tallest structures in the world. It soars well over 150 feet higher than the Sears Tower in Chicago, the tallest skyscraper in the United States. But even more incredible is the fact that much of Bullwinkle was first built in Texas, then towed in one immense piece, 332 nautical miles to its permanent offshore site. Before construction began, designers were challenged by the many problems that would be associated with Bullwinkle's tremendous size and weight. Myron Rodrigue was the project's fabrication manager. We had a very good staff of engineers and superintendents that worked together to solve a lot of these technical issues. Workers would now turn blueprints into reality, operating on a scale never before attempted. Bullwinkle's underwater substructure was built while lying on its side, covering more than four and a half acres. It used more than ten times the amount of steel in the Eiffel Tower. Its massive legs were large enough to drive a car through. Finally, two and a half years after they began, workers completed construction. By this time, another team had already finished a huge 853-foot barge, also the world's largest that was needed to tow Bullwinkle out to sea. Engineers were now ready for the next incredible challenge, loading this 50,000-ton structure onto the barge. Technicians employ computers to control the powerful winches needed for the operation. As time-lapse photography shows, this was a painstaking process that would see night turn to day, and day to night, over and over again. Engineers were dealing with so much weight that once they started the operation, they had to continue until the job was done. We even set up a dormitory on site so people could get a break from the work and take naps when they needed it. Five days later, Bullwinkle was on the barge, ready to begin its incredible journey from the fabrication yard at the southern tip of Texas through the Corpus Christi ship channel and out into the Gulf of Mexico. It was a colossal sight as the oil rig structure dwarfed everything in sight. There was four or 5,000 people lined up on the ship channel watching it leave. That absolutely amazed me. It made me feel good. You watch it pass by and you see how impressive it is and you take a little pride in that we were the people that made it happen. Three and a half days later, Bullwinkle finally arrives at its destination in the Gulf of Mexico. It is now the moment of truth, launching Bullwinkle into the water. Technicians let water into the nose of the barge, tipping it down two and a half degrees. Bullwinkle's dramatic slide begins. It's like launching a ship, except you're doing it from a barge offshore in open waters. After all the planning and years of construction, astonishingly, the entire slide takes less than 90 seconds. It's a triumphant moment for everyone. Bullwinkle is now afloat directly over the spot where it would be pinned to the ocean floor. But now another complicated installation begins. Four brave project engineers have the difficult task of navigating a small boat through choppy gulf waters as they approach the enormous, intimidating structure. They carefully board Bullwinkle and climb its ladder. Once on top, over 100 feet up, they cautiously make their way to the hydraulic control panel. From there, 
they open the flood valves that fill the lower chambers of the legs with water, lowering Bullwinkle 1,350 feet to its final position on the ocean floor. Only 15 feet of this gigantic structure is now visible above the surface. The sad part about it is once you build one of these and it's installed in the Gulf, you can't see what you did. It could be in 20 feet of water or 1,500 feet of water. Nobody would know the difference. Construction crews immediately began the incredible task of driving 28 gigantic anchoring piles through sleeves on the structure's legs and into the ocean floor. This has to be done by remote control using underwater cameras since the actual operation is happening a quarter of a mile below the surface. They drive some piles as deep as 437 feet. Bullwinkle is now on its way to becoming an imposing presence in the Gulf of Mexico. All that remains is the attachment of the huge deck sections. Built in Louisiana, they are towed out by barge, then lowered into place. Construction was finally complete. It had taken almost five and a half years at a cost that exceeded $500 million. Never before had something this huge been transported in one gigantic piece, then installed whole. It was an amazing project, unparalleled in its scope. It may stand forever as the world's tallest fixed offshore platform and a crowning achievement in deep water engineering and technology. The Bullwinkle rig is designed to tolerate incredible force near the lower ends of its legs. Now, to put this into perspective, the space shuttle generates 5.2 million pounds of thrust when it takes off. Now, if you could harness six space shuttles to Bullwinkle's legs and fire those rocket engines, Bullwinkle wouldn't budge. Well, that's all for now. Please join us next time for more extraordinary sights and sounds. I'm Michael Dorn for World of Wonder.